I am Megan Reynolds, 40 years old. I work as a researcher at a pharmaceutical company. I live with my husband, Mike, and our sixth grade daughter in a condo we bought six years ago. Despite being busy and encountering troubles. I thought we were living happily as a family of three until that day. That day, when my husband said he was going on a business trip and left the house empty. My daughter and I were doing a major cleaning. That's when we found a completed divorce form. A photo of my husband with an unknown woman and child, and his diary. Today, just like that day, my husband said he was going on a business trip. But he is actually going on a trip with his mistress. I'm sure he will come back looking as calm as ever. If that's the case, I will also submit the divorce papers as. If it's the most natural thing to do and disappear from my husband's life just as naturally. Mom, let's go. Yes, yes. We took one last look at our empty home from the entrance and slowly closed the door. The turning point was about two years ago when my husband became a regular employee. Megan. It's finally decided. What? I've been officially hired as a full-time employee starting in September. Really? Wow. It was the first time in a while I heard my husband's voice so lively at the beginning of the new year. I couldn't help but feel a lump in my throat. Eight years ago, the company my husband worked for faced financial difficulties. Underwent massive layoffs, and my husband was unfortunately caught in the turmoil. However, my husband was still 34 years old then. We thought he would find a new job soon. But the times were tough and even hiring new graduates was restricted. My husband, who had a background in clerical work, and graduated from a mid-tier university without any special qualifications, found it hard to find another job. Eventually, he had to settle for a contract position at a local mid-sized company. Around that time, we were discussing buying a house as our daughter. Stacy was starting elementary school. We were moving forward with the discussion but realized. It's tough to get a mortgage on a contract employee's salary. Can I really not afford to buy a house on my own? It's not your fault. It's because of the company's layoffs. That's true, but. I still think we need to move before Stacy starts school. We all like that condo, right? I can't think of anywhere else but there. Right. But it's popular, and we need to act fast, as the agent said. After hesitating for a moment, my husband suddenly asked and said. Sorry, Megan, could we possibly take out the mortgage in your name? It was a surprising proposal. I never thought my husband would ask me to take on a mortgage. But, given the situation, there was no other option. I was a researcher at a major pharmaceutical company. Able to secure a mortgage and maintain our lifestyle without depending on my husband's income. We would likely pass the mortgage assessment without any issues. Okay. It's fine to use my name. Megan. Thank you. And so, I took out the mortgage, and we bought the condo. My husband worked hard to become a full-time employee, not just at his job but by using the advantage of fixed working hours as a contract employee to acquire several job-relevant qualifications over a few years. There was no way he wouldn't be overjoyed by the offer of regular employment. Your hard work has been recognized by the company, congratulations. Thank you. After the layoff, being just a contract worker. You've supported me all this time, Megan. Really? Thank you. It's nothing. It's just what a family does. It's all the result of your effort. Still, thank you. Really, I'm so glad you're my wife. Saying this, my husband expressed his heartfelt gratitude. I felt relieved, thinking that now my husband could finally settle down. But reality did not follow my wishes. Preparation and handover for the official employment in September turned out to be more time-consuming than expected. 
and we began to live busy lives even before the official employment started. As the months passed since September, my husband got more accustomed to his job. But the workload kept increasing with each day, and so did his irritability. What? Overtime again? Sorry. I'm swamped with experiments for a new drug right now. Huh? I've become a full-time employee too, and I'm exhausted from the increased workload. I have to go on business trips all the time. Yet, when I come home, I have to heat up cold meals, the laundry is still not finished. The house is as messy as in the morning, and on top of that, I have to do Stacy's tutoring pickups and drop-offs. Are you taking me for granted? Why would you say that? We've always shared household chores. Sure, I might ask for your help when I'm busy, but I apologize and ask in advance. And I take on everything when you're having a tough time. Even though we said it was a division of household chores, cleaning, laundry, and cooking were almost entirely my tasks. With garbage disposal and cleaning the bath being more like helping out. Still, I was grateful for any help and always expressed my gratitude. This time was genuinely rare, as I knew I would have to work late. So I properly informed my husband in advance. Asked him to warm up the pre-made food and handle the tutoring commute, and he had agreed. But having a rational conversation with my increasingly unreasonable and irritable husband was impossible. Pampering you was a mistake. What? Back when I was a contract worker, I felt inferior. So I shared the chores even though I'm a man. But really, all this should be done by women. Are you serious? Of course. Men work and women keep the house, that's been the rule in families since forever. But, you wanted to keep your job. Saying you didn't want to waste your education and wanted to contribute to society. So I reluctantly agreed to let you continue working. What? When we got married. You were the one who insisted that me continuing to work was totally fine. That was just a convenient lie. That's terrible. It's the same with kids. I actually wanted a second child. But you were too busy with work, so I gave up on that idea for you. That's not true. When we talked about it, you were the one who had been laid off. And you said we should wait because of that. Ah. 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 In the end, you refused to admit your faults and blame everything on me. Is it because you're smarter and think I'm stupid? What? Seriously uncool. Try to be a little humble for once. Support me. After saying that, my husband stomped off to his room. I never imagined such words could come from his mouth. His statements shattered the trust we had built up over the years. Despite that, I wondered if I had inadvertently hurt him or taken advantage of his kindness. So I started sacrificing my sleep to finish household tasks to avoid burdening him further. However, around the same time, my husband began spending more time away from home. Citing business trips and entertaining clients. And the occasions we saw each other at home drastically decreased. A year after our first major conflict. As the unresolved tension in our marriage became impossible to hide, Stacy voiced her concerns. Mom. Are you okay? Hmm. You look tired. Stacy, who always pays close attention, must have noticed the strained relationship between us. I felt terrible for involving her in our troubles. Hmm. Seeing you care gives me strength. Thank you, I'm happy. Mom, if there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. What? I'm in sixth grade now. I love washing dishes, cleaning, and baking. So I want to do more cooking too. Daisy. I found a recipe for delicious beef stew on the computer. I'll make it for you next time, okay? Touched by my daughter's offer to help and her smiling face. 
I couldn't help but tear up and hugged her small body tightly, trying to hide my emotions. Mom, I really love you. Yeah, I love you too. So, how about we do some major cleaning today? Your summer break is almost over. And I think we should clean up the house before the second term starts. Can you help me? Yes. My room is piled up with school prints and workbooks. Oh, let's do dad's room too. What? Do you know dad's room is messy? After our confrontation, my husband started sleeping in the room he used as a study. That room, used only for sleeping, was cluttered carelessly. I knew better than to touch anything in there, as it would surely make him furious. So, I would vacuum the open spaces and air out the blanket. But I never touched anything that was lying around or opened anything. My cleanliness-loving daughter couldn't stand the idea of such a dirty room in our house. Saying, if we have such a dirty room, the dirty air and dust will come out with dad into our home. Well, she had a point. I couldn't agree more on that matter. But isn't it bad to touch things without permission? It's fine. I'll just say I cleaned up. Dad is soft on me, right? Indeed. Convinced by Stacy, we quietly stepped into my husband's room. Which he had left a few days ago, saying he was going on a business trip. I can't believe he complains about your housework when he lives in a room like this. While picking up clothes and papers off the floor in disbelief, I hurriedly gathered clothes left on the blanket, sorted them for laundry or closet storage, aired out the comforter, vacuumed, and quickly finished cleaning my husband's room. Suddenly, I noticed Stacy standing in front of my husband's desk, staring intently at something. Stacy, what's wrong? Startled by my voice, she slowly turned around with an indescribably shadowed expression and began to speak in a low, angry tone that was hard to believe. Dad has a child with another woman. What? Hearing such a statement from my sixth grade daughter, I rushed to her side in a panic. What happened? Why would you say that? This. She handed me several photos and my husband's planner. Reluctantly taking them, I saw pictures of my husband with a young woman I didn't know. And he was holding a baby that was smiling brightly. I felt as if I had been struck on the head. At the same time, I felt like I found the answer to my husband's actions. What is this? I think it's dad's girlfriend and their baby. Why? How can you say that? Because it's written here. Where? Here. She showed me a planner page marked with a family half-year birthday. This photo was tucked in this page. That page and others were filled with family plans and entries that looked like diary notes. Detailing meticulously. This means the baby is theirs, right? Probably, yes. So, this woman is dad's girlfriend, right? The words dad's girlfriend uttered by Stacy pierced my heart. Holding back tears and biting my lip, I hugged Stacy and quickly scanned through the other pages. Confirming what she had said. Everything Stacy said was true. What kind of words has he made my elementary school child say? And to leave such evidence in plain sight, without any attempt to hide it. Stacy, I'm sorry. I put down the planner and gently stroked Stacy's head with my hand. Why are you apologizing, Mom? Dad's the one who did something wrong. But I wonder if I had paid more attention to Dad. Maybe I could have prevented you from getting hurt. That's not it. I'm sure you're hurt more than I am, Mom. I know. Dad yells when he's in a bad mood, and you, trying to reconcile with such a dad. Work even harder for the family. Stacy. Thank you. I don't know if hurt is the right word. It's more like feeling betrayed, I guess. Aren't you angry? Of course, I'm angry because what dad is doing is selfish. It hurts everyone. 
not just Stacy and me, but also dad, our grandparents, our friends, everyone around our family. That's why I can't forgive him. While saying this to Stacy, my own words dug deeper into my heart. It was as if, while we were here, my husband had been creating another family. It's unthinkable as a person. Mom, did you really have no clue? Hmm. I noticed that dad was acting strange. So, I thought something was up. But honestly, I never imagined it was this. Actually, I thought something was off too. What? You know how dad lets me play games on his phone when he's in a good mood? Stacy only has a kid's smartphone. So there's a rule that she can borrow ours to play games if we agree. At that time, I saw lots of messages from a woman. Really? Yeah. Messages like, thank you for today, see you tomorrow. Looking forward to our trip starting tomorrow, I love you too, and so on. You saw those messages? Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought it would shock you, so I didn't tell you. I had no idea Stacy had seen such messages. It's embarrassing and angering at the same time. I'm sorry too, Stacy. I made you worry too much. Stacy. If you notice or see something like that again, can you tell me everything? Yes, I'll help mom. Help? You're going to make dad regret it, right? Regret, huh? Yeah. I guess I do want to make him regret it a lot. I want to make him regret too. So, let me help, okay? Right. It's probably better to have more allies. Yeah. I'll gather information from dad's smartphone. Gather information? Yeah. Dad thinks I'm still a little kid. So he's not cautious at all and enters his password in front of me. Is that so? So, I'll remember dad's password and get messages, pictures, and stuff when he lends me his phone, then send it to your phone. Can you do that, Stacy? Of course. It's common sense for elementary school students these days. Impressive. Then maybe I should gather information from a different angle. As we resumed cleaning, let's get back to cleaning, we continued to clean taking care not to provoke my husband too much, while preserving potential evidence by taking photos with our smartphones. The only thing I carefully took to my room was the completed divorce form, left folded in a corner of the desk. Since that night, I quietly began preparing for a divorce. Now, several months later, Stacy and I are in our new home, watching TV in the living room after finishing her homework from tutoring. Stacy, shouldn't you be going to bed soon? Right, I should go to sleep. Good night, Mom. Good night, Stacy. Saying that, Stacy returned to her room. It's been a few days since we moved, and not having to see what I don't want to see is a relief. I used to worry about when he would come back or if he would say something. Though I thought I wasn't bothered by it, it seems I was quite oppressed. The headaches that had been secretly continuing for so long have not been felt these past few days. The body is honest, I thought, as my smartphone on the desk alerted me to an incoming call. The name displayed on the screen was as expected. I couldn't help but smirk as I slid my finger across the screen to answer. Hello? Hey. What's going on? The key's not working. The call was from my husband, returning from a business trip. He must have followed someone into the entrance and now stands in front of the door to our condo, frantically trying to use the key that won't work. Mike, could you stop? You're going to break the key. What? Then hurry up and open it. I can't. What? I can't open it. Why not? Because I'm not there. What? What do you mean you're not there? You're inside, right? Is this some kind of harassment against me? Open up now. I told you Mike, I'm not in that condo. What? 
Where did you go, leaving your husband behind? Well, because you're not my husband anymore. What? We're not a couple anymore, so I don't care about you anymore. Excuse me. So, there's no need for me and Stacy to live in that house, so we moved out. What? Say that again? I divorced you. So, I sold that house and moved out with Stacy. Understand? There was a stunned silence on the other end. Then, a torrent of his bewildered mutterings like, You're kidding, this has to be a joke, seriously? And so on continued. It's not a joke, Mike, and I have no intention of seeing you again. So, please find somewhere else to sleep tonight. At those words, my now ex-husband began to rage. Don't mess with me. Don't do whatever you want. How did you even divorce me without my consent? I never once talked about divorce with you. The house was in my name, so I had every right to sell it. You can't just do whatever you want with our house. Doing whatever one wants? You did that first, didn't you? So, I did the same. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. What? That makes no sense. Well, indeed, you never directly told me about getting a divorce. But, you had those conversations many times with someone else, right? I'm going to leave my wife. So? What? Ah. Uh. Sorry, sorry. Your business trips have been obvious lies for a long time. What? By the way. Who's looking after that small child? When you guys pretend to go on business trips but actually go on vacations. The woman's parents? Don't tell me you leave the child at the woman's place unattended? Mike was speechless again. He probably never imagined I would bring up such a topic. Caught off guard by this unexpected turn, he seemed confused. Emitting incomprehensible sounds like Ah uh, And Ah uh, Didn't think I knew all that, did you? How? As Mike squeezed out a raspy voice, I continued over him. I started sensing something was off about you. Since around the time you got permanently employed. It escalated from there, with you becoming unreasonably abusive and neglectful toward the family. The decisive moment was when I found photos, a diary. And a completed divorce form while cleaning your room. What? You get it now, right? Why I divorced you, how I was able to do it. You knew I had another woman and a child. Yes, I knew everything. The diary meticulously recorded all the trips and overnights you had disguised as business trips. And there was even a completed divorce form on the desk, ready to finalize our separation. And it seems like you've been telling that woman you'd divorce me over messenger. So, I gave you what you wanted. Happy now? Mike's ragged breathing came through the phone as he was thrown into further confusion. After doing all that, this man is now flustered. By the way, it was Stacy who first mentioned you might have a secret child. Huh? Stacy? Why? Because she was the first to find the photos and stuff you carelessly left around your room. What? I never imagined I'd hear the words secret child from Stacy. She figured it out as soon as she saw the photo and diary. You're kidding. Plus, Stacy had suspected you had another woman for a while. Huh? Why? Your smartphone. Smartphone? When she borrowed it from you to play games. She saw lots of messages popping up from another woman. Stuff like, thank you for today, and I love you too. That's a lie. I haven't heard a word about this. Did you think she'd tell you honestly after seeing that? By sixth grade, girls understand what those kinds of messages mean. What? She's just a kid in sixth grade. How would she understand adult relationships? Huh. So you acknowledge it's adult relationships then? 
Ah. Well, in reality, it's not just a relationship, but seems like you've gone way beyond that. Shut up. Anyway, Stacy knew about your mistress before me and kept it to herself. You treat Stacy like a little kid, showing no caution around her. That's why Stacy knows your smartphone password. She used that to collect messages and photos as evidence for me. What? Stacy knows my password? Stacy said you never guard against her because you think she's just a small child. Turns out it's true. You're so unguarded, you didn't even notice Stacy watching you text your mistress from behind, did you? What? Stacy did that. Yes. Stacy did it all for her mommy's sake. She remembered the content like a diary. So, your actions were practically an open book. All your supposed business trips that were actually vacations. Or overnights were known to us in detail. You're kidding. This business trip was with that woman to Colorado, wasn't it? How nice for you, going to Colorado in December. Taking annual leave during the busiest time of the year. Did you have fun? It seems Mike is wary of my unexpectedly bright and calm demeanor. Carefully choosing his next words. But I'm not going to let him dictate the pace. I continue to bombard him with words at my own pace. By the way, as I mentioned earlier, while you two were away on your trip. What exactly was happening with that little child? Surely, you didn't leave the child at the woman's place, did you? I left the child with her parents. They seem to adore their grandchild. Oh, they adore their grandchild, huh? So, they've been duped by you guys? What? You haven't actually married her, have you? But you're pretending to be a married couple? Uh... Well, no, but... How transparent. Otherwise, they wouldn't have agreed to take care of the child. Poor parents. To be deceived by a fraudster like you. I'm not scamming anyone. It's just a matter of convenience. Convenience for what? You're always deceiving people around you. What are you really up to? What? Who else have I deceived? Us, obviously. Pretending to be on business trips when you're actually staying overnight with someone. Even starting another family. What else would you call that but deception? That's. I'll be making sure you pay for that. Huh? Deciding to give my ex-husband a final notice, I continued. I'll be hiring a lawyer for the compensation and child support, among other things. What? A lawyer? Of course. And bear in mind. I know everything. The woman is naturally, I'll be claiming against that woman as well. Emma Anderson, your former colleague, right? How do you know her name? A friend from my college days works at your company. I got the info from them. What? I hesitated at first, but after seeing that photo, I decided to contact them. And they filled me in on everything. Friends are indeed valuable. They even told me you're in hot water at work. What? Since you became a permanent employee, I heard you've become rather harsh to others. And there have been multiple complaints. Of harassment filed against you at the internal compliance desk. Plus, there's the suspicion of infidelity leading to the pregnancy. And resignation of a former employee, right? Sounds pretty bad to me. How did you know about that? Because my friend told me. What will you do if you're fired for compliance violations now? How will you pay the compensation or child support? And there's also the compensation you owe to your unemployed girlfriend, right? How will you manage? Huh? What will you do? My pressing tone caused Mike to shout back, demanding me to stop and calling me annoying. And then there's the care of that little child. How will he manage? Well, it's none of my business anymore. Anyway, 
I don't intend to speak directly with you about this matter anymore. Everything will be handled through my lawyer. Just remember this. Snooping on someone's phone is a crime. I know. But I haven't done that. It was Stacy who did it all for me without me knowing. If you say that's a crime and want to sue, you'd have to sue Stacy. Are you going to do that? That's right. You still adore Stacy too much to see her as anything but your little girl. You couldn't possibly sue her. Of course, I knew what Stacy was doing, but it was indeed Stacy herself who took the initiative. And I hadn't been involved at all. Stacy is hurt too. There's no way this man would sue his own daughter. After a moment of silence, Mike began to speak as if resigned. The condo is really empty? I told you, didn't I? Then, what about my stuff? Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that. I sent everything to your parents' house. What? I properly informed your parents that I was sending the stuff and made my final farewell. But at first, we really weren't on the same page. It turns out, in their eyes, I had already married someone new after we supposedly divorced. I was taken aback to learn you even deceived your own parents. What? You told everything to my parents. Of course. Otherwise, how could I send your stuff to your family home? What have you done? Because they were clueless. At home, they thought we had divorced shortly after you became a full-time employee. That's. You brought that woman who's pregnant as your new wife. Unbelievable, right? But with her being pregnant, your parents had no choice but to accept her, right? Stacy had been saying she wanted to visit a grandma and grandpa multiple times. But you kept refusing because we were too busy. Turns out, it was because we were supposedly already divorced. Mike was at a loss for words as I rapidly explained. It was indeed a shock. I never expected to be informed by his parents that we had been divorced for over a year and a half. Of course, due to the setup of having a new wife. He had met that woman and her child multiple times, and faced with such an atrocious reality. His parents were deeply apologetic to Stacy and me. Your father said, that guy can come back. But he's disowned until he apologizes to Megan and Stacy. I won't acknowledge anything about him. Seriously? Mike's father is a traditional craftsman who, while kind to others, is very serious and hates dishonesty. It's utterly shameful and unfortunate that they had to apologize for the actions of their wayward adult son. However, wanting nothing more to do with these two lunatics, I decided to graciously accept the support offered by Mike's parents. So, your belongings have already been delivered to your family home. Please go back home as soon as possible and sincerely apologize to your parents. Then, you might want to think about what you'll do next with your woman and your future. Although I doubt your father will easily accept it. This is so annoying. Excuse me? The real annoyance is dealing with you. Zor. Don't involve us in your farce ever again. The lawyer will contact you and that woman, so don't try to escape or hide. Deal with it properly. While Mike was still making noise on the other end of the phone. I had no intention of speaking with this man anymore and wanted to cut ties as soon as possible. With that mindset, I tapped the screen to end the call and proceeded to block his contact. Months have passed since then, and today was Stacy's middle school entrance ceremony. Walking home in her new uniform, she looked happy beside me. How do you like your uniform? I absolutely love it. It really makes me feel like I'm part of the middle school now. Do you think you'll make a lot of friends? Yeah, the teachers seem nice, and the classmates are easy to talk to. I'm looking forward to school every day now. Stacy had actually taken the middle school entrance exams. It was something we had decided on as she approached her senior years in elementary school. 
and my insistence on resolving our divorce before her exams was for this reason. I wanted to settle everything before your middle school entrance exams. Discovering my ex-husband's wrongdoing during the summer break. I didn't want to crush Stacy's long-held dream. With that determination, I planned the timing for our confrontation and prepared for everything. But I'm sorry, Stacy. It wasn't exactly an environment conducive to a student preparing for exams back then, was it? Huh? Really? Because we were all over the place, and Stacy. You were doing things like a spy, weren't you? Ah. Sneaking a look at the smartphone? Yes. Well, it was actually more peaceful without him around. And regarding the smartphone, it was kind of like stress relief. Huh? That was a stress reliever for you? Of course. Exposing the secrets of such a terrible person with my own hands was nothing. But thrilling and exciting. With a beaming smile, Stacy spoke terrifying words, and I whispered. You must never do it again, okay? I don't plan to, but if someone else comes along who hurts mom, I can't promise I won't. Those strong yet gentle words resonated deeply within me. It's okay. For now, I just want to enjoy living with just Stacy and me. Actually, I'm fine with it being just the two of us forever. Me too, if it's just me and mom, we're invincible. Having a fun new school life and living just with mom, I'm totally satisfied. Stacy said this with a sparkle in her eyes. Today, having reached this day safely, I finally feel the same. By the way, Grandma keeps sending me a lot of messages. I wonder if she's still worried. Of course, she's worried. After such an event, she must be concerned about how her beloved granddaughter Stacy is doing. It's not Grandma's fault, though. Parents are like that. They feel like it's their entire fault that their son did such a thing they're probably shocked. I guess so. What he did was truly awful. After the divorce, Stacy stopped calling her father a dad. Though she keeps in touch with her grandmother. She doesn't seem to know anything about that person's whereabouts. Calling him that person might be her way of putting distance and protecting herself. Unsaid, but it's natural for Stacy's heart to be hurt. Yet, I can't erase that hurt or pretend it doesn't exist. All I can do is layer over it with happy and joyful things, with positives. Stacy, you said you wanted a present for entering school, right? Yeah, we talked about it. Should we add to the family? Huh? Family? Yes, family. Stacy, you said you wanted a kitten, right? We've moved to a pet-friendly apartment this time. So, we can increase our family, okay? What? Really? Are you serious, mom? Yes. Whether it's a brother or a sister is fine. A friend of mine is taking care of little rescue kittens, and she says there are lots of cute ones. So she invited us to come and see. What? Really? Yes. Actually, the place where the rescue kittens are is close by. Do you want to go see them now? After a moment of surprise, Stacy's face lit up with a brilliant smile. Yes. Let's go. I want to go, and she began to excitedly hop around. Whether adopting a kitten can heal the wounds of losing a family and being hurt, I don't know but I believe the positives will gradually stack up. Then, let's go. Yes. Children grow up fast. Stacy will change day by day in her new environment. I vow to watch over Stacy's growth, pouring abundant love into her. With that thought, I grasp the small, warm hand beside me tightly. We start our walk towards a new encounter.